Uh, welcome to this afternoon's session on synthesis. Um, I'll start off straight away uh, by, word, by way of introduction with uh, some words about the background to the session and then some of the reasons why we need good synthesis. Um, on the slide, um, uh, the uh, talks about the prom promotion of archaeological synthesis report, which um, has been produced by Society of Antiquaries, British Ad Academy, and together with the University of Archaeology UK, um, we're invited to produce a review of synthesis and de development-led archaeology for the 21st century Challenges in Archaeology project, CAP21, early in 2023. I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, 21 CAP. Um, uh, the ma a major strategic review and forward plan for the sector um, that was developed by CIFA and um, has been developed by CIFA and Historic England. Um, under Work Package 4, uh, titled From Data and Knowledge to Synthesizing Discoveries and by Sharing Research Findings for More Accessible Ways, um, the report was produced. It's now, um, well, the pen penultimate draft is now on the 21 cap pages of the Historic Environment. Um, as Historic England uh, website uh, with the uh, um, link there and a couple of pages from the report. It's um, reasonably short, but uh, no pictures and no graphs. It's, it's all text. There's a, syn a synthesis review about synthesis, but it does contain um, in lots of uh, small uh, bites uh, information about the the, uh, uh, the current system and and some of the issues which may need to be addressed and there are a series of uh, recommendations that have come out of the report so it's it's up on the website and we are looking for further comments which would be welcome for input to a final draft of the report uh, which is the uh, uh, the findings of and, and the discussion points from this session will also feed into. So looking at why we need, very, very briefly, why we need good synthesis. Uh, first point is to make sense of so much past, the need to understand the context of individual site types and how they fit in contemporary local and regional frameworks. But um, it's a rough estimate. There are 30 to 4 new excavation monographs and 100, and 100 to 200 journal articles per year nationally to assimilate and synthesize. And to the, the uh, right is uh, current monographs produced in the east of England, 23, 24, about 10 monographs, um, including, including some synthesis. Um, and, and that's obviously for a very busy, busy region. But um, you know, national, nationally, you're looking at a large number of publications to do with archaeology to assimilate and synthesize. And also looking back to the Roman Rural Settlement Project, 20, it's 10 years since that's finished, and um, rough estimate there could be up to around about a thousand new Roman rural settlements since that project finished, uh, the cutoff cutoff date. And also the set of known archaeology has increased, rough estimate again, three to four times since the 1990s, from that figure then of about 650,000 from the Mars report and uh, the quantity of data in uh, the old SMRs. Um, the total number of sites worthy of investigation is probably anywhere between five and 10 times that number um, that was uh, around in the 1990s. So a lot of past to assimilate. So why we need good synthesis? Um, to facilitate better de decision making in terms of planning advice and research prioritization. And the first point I've got here is the relationship between scale of investigation and its relatively usefulness for research. And um, there's three charts to the right uh, from the Roman Rural Settlement Project. The chart, chart shows the numbers for the important binary classification in the project of all farmsteads as either simple enclosed or developed and those that couldn't be classified. And um, they're the two 
bar charts, the two categories on the, uh, uh, the left side of that chart, and the unclassified on the right, which is the largest number. And then the numbers um, in, uh, uh, useful that, that could be used for that analysis in the east of England region, Cambridgeshire quite a lot, Suffolk not so many, and for Hearts, it was a wake-up call to me at the time, working in Hertfordshire as county archaeologist, that there was only a few in Hertfordshire that classified, they could be classified, because the areas being excavated were quite small, lots of Roman sites, lots of Roman excavations, but not many that could actually be uh, used for that uh, important uh, piece of uh, synthesis uh, and advanced work on uh, the type of sites. And you can see at the bottom, at the bottom chart is the national picture and uh, those that be classified in red and those that couldn't be classified in blue. And on the left-hand side are the smaller sites and the right-hand side, the bigger sites. And you can see it's a fairly straight graph in both directions. So the larger the excavation, the more useful it is. And when you consider also that the, nas the, the national picture for excavated area, there's a, the, it increases quite dramatically from north, west, south, east. So the south, east has by far the larger uh, average area of excavation. So it, it, it sort of compounds the issue of um, how you find and sites that are good for uh, knowledge and synthesis. In the northwest, you need to target perhaps the larger sites um, quite, quite uh, particularly, um, whereas they're far more common in the east of England. Uh, and the number of Roman sites is also more common. So size matters. Then information redundancy. Um, this is where, um, for instance, you, you, you get, again, looking at Roman, Roman uh, settlement, uh, repeated patterns in the landscape where over time you can predict uh, the type of evidence you're going to get and the type of results from analysis. So maybe you need to look at different ways of prioritising uh, uh, the way you excavate and the way you to analyse some inf information redundancy. But also in terms of assemblages, um, particularly for animal bone, the, the scale of the assemblage um, influences how useful they are for analysis. So again, size matters. The third point um, here is to foster greater collaboration within the sector, uh, especially with universities and within the commercial sector, but also with local government and the voluntary sector. So those are the three points briefly to look at in terms of why we need synthesis.